On August 8th, around noon, a wildfire began in the Kauai area, located on the northwest side of Hawaii Island. The area is known for its frequent wildfires, but the latest one was one of the more intense ones in recent history. Over 4,500 acres burned in total, but the sheer size of the fire has been overshadowed by what it has threatened. For one, the wildfire burned dangerously close to the Kauai High Village, Mauna Kea Beach Resort, and Spencer Beach Park, causing mass evacuations. Fortunately, residents were allowed to return within a day. The story of collaboration carried through with the incredible coordination between multiple fire suppression agencies. Within a few days, the fire was under control. The structures at Pu'u Kohola Heiau were spared from significant damage, although 90% of the vegetation, including native plants, were lost within the national park. Piles of logs from a recent timber harvest were also engulfed across the street. Fortunately, in the end, no homes or lives were lost due to the courage of our firefighters and the public's cooperation and support. However, over a week later, the impacts of the wildfire continued to be far-reaching. In general, after an intense wildfire burns an area in Hawaii, most of the vegetation that was previously holding down the soil burns with it. What's left are large areas of fine, loose, ashen soil that is left vulnerable for the next storm event. To make matters worse, during a wildfire in Hawaii, gases get trapped in the soil and when the area cools down, those gases become a solid crust that acts much like wax on a surfboard. When water tries to percolate into the ground, it's unable to make it past the crust and slips off just like it would on a waxy surfboard, and instead it washes away the soil on top of the crust. We call these soils hydrophobic, or scared of water. Depending on various environmental conditions and the severity of the fire, these soils can remain hydrophobic for years. Most native plants aren't adapted to wildfires, and after a wildfire, most, if not all, of the seed banks get erased. They also have much difficulty establishing themselves in these hydrophobic soils. The first plants to re-establish themselves after a wildfire are more likely to be fire-loving like fountain grass, ekoa, and kiave, and they eventually retake the landscape, leaving native plants in the dust. That dusty, ashen soil is now all over the coastline in Kauai Hai. On Monday, August 17th, a storm brought heavy rainfall to the state, including the northwest side of Hawaii Island. Inches of rain fell each hour, which as you can imagine created frightening flash flood scenarios. Highways were shut down, vehicles were stranded, and dozens of residents evacuated the Kauai Hai area. An unprecedented amount of murky stormwater ran through the streams and streets of Kauai Hai, and as of Tuesday morning, continues to find routes to the ocean. Places like Hawaii High Harbor, a popular local hangout for fishermen, surfers, and families, and an important shipping area and tour boat launch is now covered in a thick layer of flood debris, including stumps and branches of dead trees and sediment, the remnants of the intense wildfire that burned over a week ago. The flood debris is also having severe impacts on another precious coastal resource, our coral reefs. Maumai Beach, home to some beautiful reefs, is currently smothered in post-fire debris. Clouds of debris can be detrimental to coral since they require sunlight to survive. Sometimes these clouds of debris can sit in a bay like Maumai for days or weeks on end, doing major damage to coral. You can only imagine the impacts that result from losing our coral reefs. The latest Kauai Hai fire is a reminder that Mauka wildfires impact Makai waters. It's also a reminder of the importance of wildfire prevention and preparedness. Rather than having to spend thousands of dollars in post-fire and flood recovery, there are plenty of ways to help minimize the wildfire threat on a much more cost-effective level, but it's going to take a collaborative effort. The Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization is a small nonprofit with only five staff members, but with our long list of partners in Yorkokua, we can start working towards making Hawaii a safer place to live and protecting our precious aina from Mauka to Makai. Learn how you can take action by visiting hawaiiwildfire.org slash take action.